In today's show, we're talking about points leagues. We're talking about category leagues. We're talking about the difference between them, why it matters, how it matters. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. You can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Fangio Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit Fangio.com slash Locked On today to get started. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. So, like I said at the start, we're going to be talking points leagues versus category leagues in today's show, which is, uh, I think it's an important thing to always talk about, and I'll explain why in a second. So, we'll get into that in a second, but morning, what do you reckon? Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) Firstly, another reminder for the FBI LOFB World Cup. The biggest fantasy basketball nine-category tournament that there is. It's 48 leagues, 48 divisions of 12 teams. So we're talking 576 teams. It's nine cat standard. And the winner will be, I think, the best fantasy basketball player in the world. It's a $20 entry fee. You've got, you can see all the details on the screen here. Nine cat, 14 man roster, 10 starters, four bench. Slow drafts, which will begin in October. Um, we do have two redrafts during the season. So you get through phase one. There's a redraft of your team. You get through that and you, you do another redraft into the final round as well. $20 entry. I am giving out... 288 spots out of the 576 through this show. We already gave out 144 last week. Um, There'll be another 144 that come out um, on the weekend, this coming weekend. So just if you have applied, the link to apply is in the show notes on YouTube here. And it's in the show notes on the podcast as well. There's a, a Google form to fill out. There will be applications there and I'll be taking 144 people from those applications. I'll let you know there's over 400 applications in there already. So uh, some of you are going to miss out. And then the guys over at Fantasy Basketball International, they'll be giving out the other 288 spots in a couple of weeks time. You will not have received your official league invite yet. If you do, did get, if you got the initial email from me last week saying, hey, congratulations, you're in. You're in. I've got your name in in a database of, of emails. You won't have got the official league invite yet because they're still setting up the particulars of the league. It's a big league to set up. It's 48 divisions, and you'll get that official league invite soon. So don't panic. It hasn't been sent out yet. You didn't miss anything. I've got all your details in a spreadsheet of everyone's emails. So don't forget, fill out that form. You've got a couple more chances this week until we give out the final 144 uh, invites at the end of this week across the weekend. So we're going to talk about now fantasy points leagues versus fantasy category leagues. The two types of fantasy leagues. Why is this, or what what, what actually matters when we're talking about this? And and we'll talk about why it matters in a second. Just quickly though, when I I talk about this. Now these numbers that I'm going to give you here are relatively reflective of what I've heard from people who work host sites, right? You might think that one thing is way more popular than the other because that's what you know. These are the numbers that I have been told. 60% or so, 65% of leagues in fantasy basketball are head-to-head category leagues. The majority of the stuff that I do is based on head-to-head category leagues because that is the majority of the leagues that run. Simple as that. It also has more strategy involved in it and more nuance in terms of valuations and players, so it deserves a little bit of extra focus on it. About 30% of leagues are fantasy head-to-head points leagues. Or about 30% of leagues are points leagues. So we do cover points league stuff, and that's what we're doing in today's show. Points leagues, again, this is not an insult. It does this is not quite as complicated as a category league. You're dealing with one number for points leagues. 5% of leagues are rotisserie leagues. So when you say that I might not talk a huge amount about roto leagues, that's because not many people play roto leagues. And I will do some stuff on Roto Leagues. We'll have a Roto mock draft. We'll do some stuff on Roto. And I'm going to be trying to work out some different formulas for for working at value in in Roto Leagues at some point. But that is 5% of leagues. 
So in general, it's 70% of leagues are categories, 65 head-to-head, 5% roto, and 30% points leagues. That's about the split that we have. So what does actually matter when you're viewing whether players are better or worse in a head-to-head category league or a head-to-head uh, points league? Well, to be a better player in a points league in general, now I have to do general discussions here on points leagues. Another reason why it is hard to do content on points leagues because... So many of you will tell me, well, well, to make a point to the good, Josh, all you got to do is custom scoring. Well, that means it's I'm unable to talk about it, really, because if you start making all customizations, then it becomes impossible to value players because the valuation of players in points leagues is based on a very specific number, fantasy points. And if you ch- start changing the formula around, then I can't talk about what your league does specifically. So whenever I reference fantasy points leagues, it's going to be based on the default scoring, which is default NBA fantasy point scoring, default Yahoo fantasy point scoring, default Fangio fantasy point scoring. That's all the same. It's a number the NBA instituted to try and get consistency across formats. A few sites like ESPN said, nah, we're going to do something different. And a lot of you will do things different in your own leagues as well. So when I'm talking fantasy points leagues, that's what I'm talking about. It's one point per point, 1.2 points per rebounds, uh, 1.5 points per assist, three points per steal, three points per block, and minus one point per turnover. That's the scoring system. As a general rule, to be better in a points league, the players who are better in points leagues versus category leagues are players that score more, obviously. An average scorer scorer in a fantasy league scores about 17, 18 real-life points per game. And because it's a one-to-one comparison, that means that the average player gets 17 fantasy points just from scoring alone. Whereas the average amount of steals that a player gets is one. And that means you get three points. It is wildly out of whack. So players that score more, the high-volume stats like scoring, the players that rebound more, where the average is like six rebounds, they are more valuable. And then it goes to assist, where the average is about 3.8. With 1.5 points there, you get six or seven points uh, as a general average player from assist. So points, if you're just a big points guy, a big point scorer, you're RJ Barrett, you're big point scorer, nothing else, that boosts you up the, the rankings in a points league. If you have a high reliance on your defensive ability, Jaron Jackson, Walker Kessler, Nick Claxton, um, Daniel Gafford, if you have a high reliance on defensive stats, Matisse Thybul, DeAnthony Melton, because that has value in category leagues much more so than in points leagues, well, it just doesn't matter for points leagues. If you average nine points but two and a half steals, you're useless in a points league, really. Like, you're not doing anything. So those players that are better in points leagues are the ones that don't rely on defense, that score a lot. And also, the players that are better in points leagues versus category leagues are the guys that get dinged significantly for having bad percentages, because it doesn't matter. Volume is what matters, not efficiency in a points league. And I know that your points league might include efficiency. The standard one doesn't. So as a general rule, players who get dinged for bad percentages, Giannis, Luca, um, Paolo, they're better in points leagues. Simple. Players that are better in category leagues or appear better in category leagues due to default rankings that get thrown out there are players who are stronger in percentages you have high field goals, high free throws. You're going to appear better in a points in a category league than in a points league. And players who do well with defensive stats. Those guys I mentioned before. OG Ananobi, Matisse Thybul, um, uh, Javon Carter even as a steals guy. The blocks players, Kessler and Lopez and even Wimbanyama perhaps or Holmgren. Those sort of guys who bring a lot of their value through getting steals and blocks and high percentages. Those players look better in category leagues versus points leagues. We'll get into talking why it's important to know this in a second. But today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Football season is here and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you get bonus bets every time that that team wins in the regular season. So whatever team you pick to win the Super Bowl, every victory they have in the regular season gets you bonus bets. So you think that the Chiefs might win the Super Bowl or the Eagles, you put a bet on them to win the Super Bowl. You might not love the odds for those guys to win the Super Bowl, but the every regular season victory they get adds into your bonus bets. And with those bonus bets, you can use that on spreads and money lines and player props and over-unders and whatever it is that you like all over at FanDuel. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Start earning bonus bets with America's number one sportsbook. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Don't forget to gamble responsibly. Why does it matter 
Why does it matter to know the players that are better in points leagues or better in category leagues or conversely worse in categories, worse in points? Why does it matter? Because I'll tell you why. When you go on to Yahoo, when you go on to Fantrax, when you go on to ESPN and you sit in your draft room, there will be a column on Yahoo. Let's say it's called X rank, right? What does X rank mean? Does anybody understand what X rank is? X is standing for expert. It is not one person doing those numbers. It's a conglomerate of different guys. No matter what they tell you, it's, there's some different factors that are involved in it. Um, a lot of it is... There's Dan Titus, who you know we, we love and he's been on this show many times, he's starting to influence that a little bit more. But as a general rule, they try and do it as a balance. X rank. Oh, yeah, you know, this guy, we, we base it on... You know, where does he sort of fit subjectively? Not not format specific. So when you go into and see a rank list, an X rank list, which will how those guys will be displayed to you in a draft room, you'll see them sitting in these positions, which then highly influences ADP as well, which I'll get to in a second. But the guys who have stark differences between their category league value and their points league value, well, usually when people are doing these subjective ranks lists, they try and find it somewhere, they either find it somewhere in the middle or they skew to cats or they skew to points meaning that it's not going to be applicable to everybody. So you, you got to know the guys who are significantly different between the two formats and then how to understand that. Last season, great example. Ja Morant on Yahoo came in with an X rank of 14, which for a points league is absolutely, totally reasonable. And for a category league was absolutely insane. It made no sense whatsoever, but they sort of tried to base, base it on points leagues, I guess, for last season. Because when you go to start up a league on Yahoo, they actually default to making you start a points league. Now, again, majority of people change out of that and go to category leagues, but that's what they default to. But if you don't know that, if you don't know what these X ranks are, and you head into a category league draft, and you see Jar sitting there at 12, and this season's different, obviously, he's suspended, right, to start the season. But if you're sitting there, and there's a guy sitting right at the top of that list, and you go, oh, like, what? Okay, well, I guess I guess someone smarter than me has ranked him this high. He must be worth it. But you, but you haven't understood why it's there. And then, all of that ranking stuff, where there is X rank or ESPN rankings, but ESPN does put out two sets of rankings. They put out a points league ranking and a category league ranking. But, but when you go to do drafts, they don't always list them in the order that your league format is. I'm pretty sure they put them all in there as the points league rankings. Now, I don't use ESPN for fantasy basketball. I don't really think that I that it's a good format. It's a good platform to use it. I, I don't think that. So I don't use it. But in the past, what they do is they, they you go to a category league mock draft and they have the points league rankings preloaded in there. And if you don't know that, you'll be looking at that draft and guys will get taken at certain spots based on those ranks. And then that all influences ADP data you will notice that it's not all that, it's not very common to see ADP data stray significantly from ranks. What you will see is there might be four, five, six, seven spots difference between X rank or ESPN rank and ADP data. And then what you will see happen is that when they make updates to those ranks, that then the ADP will slowly start to push towards that updated number. So you might have a situation where you've been drafting somebody at pick 80, because and their X rank was um, 60. So yeah, you'll see that. And then the ADP sits at 70 because people are sort of pushing away from that 60 number. But then they look at that data and they look at the rankings on Yahoo and they change it and they make that guy now ranked 100 when you've been picking him at 80 and his ADP was 70. And people now see him at 100 and that ADP of 70 will start to slowly push towards 100. It'll push out to 75. It'll push out to 80. It'll push out to 90. It'll follow that. ADP mirrors pre-ranks on sites very closely. And as I've said, the pre-ranks on sites are often nebulous. Like they're not actually specific to anything. And I get it. It's a hard thing to do to put out these numbers specifically when you've just got, well, everyone loves a list. We love it. Here's our NBA tiers. Here's our NBA top 100. Here's the 50 best players in the NBA. Here's my top 15 players of all time. When I actually think that's kind of bullshit. Like I think that the rankings are pretty ridiculous just in every sort of circumstance. Because it's not really how, you know, is, is the 10th guy better than the 11th guy? Is the gap between 10 and 11 the same as the gap between 9 and 10? Well, the answer is nearly always no. So 
putting those rankings, but people love it. People love absorbing that and absorbing those rank numbers and paying attention to it. So they put those out, but it influences so much and you've got to understand that. And then the next thing is that it filters through to fantasy advice and articles and podcasts that you listen to. People will throw out, well, he was actually ranked this number or he's pre-ranked here, or I think he's this level of player, but that might not apply to your league. Is it a points league? Is it a modified points league? Is it a modified category league? Like it differs based, and I'm probably guilty of this as well, is that you will see all these things referenced. And if you can't turn that information into something that makes sense for how your league sits, well, you're going to get misled. And this doesn't give you every piece of information. I can't do that. I can't provide specific information for every one of your settings in every league. It's impossible. That's what Basketball Monster does. You put in all your league details and every projection just gets turned into something that is specific to your league. But wherever you listen or read or see threads on Twitter or articles written somewhere, be careful about the numbers that get put out there. What do they mean? What do these ranked numbers legitimately mean? And that will help you, I guess, from getting or being led too far astray. Now, the next thing is, is uh, is the whole, I am going to do another show on this, I think at some point, just regarding the way that nine category or category league rankings work in general. I've got a lot of debates about how it all works, right? Because, you know, I'll, I'll, I just have, I do I have a lot of issues with with how they're presented and how they're used and how they're referenced all the time. But given that the majority of people are playing in head-to-head category leagues, and to win in a head-to-head category league, you need to win five categories in a week, right? I'm not out here telling you that you have to punt four categories. You, you don't. But you also don't need to be average or good in all nine categories. You don't need to do that. So when I'm talking relative rankings in categories, I'm going to be referring to minus one ranks a lot more because I just think that it's just not realistic to look at Giannis as the 108th best player or even the 50th best player. It's not realistic. It's not realistic to see uh, Cam Johnson at 40. It's not, right? We have to look at players and taking away that worst category because if you have Giannis, you know you can actually win free throws with Giannis. It is possible. But if you've got Giannis, then you need to divert more resources to getting your free throws up. So in general, you're probably going to lose it a lot of the time. But does that make him such a terrible player? No, it doesn't. I think in head-to-head and in categories, you want to really focus on strengths. You want to boost your strengths versus being penalized for extreme weaknesses. And again, I think there's an issue with the way rankings are sometimes displayed there. But that's all really important I think when you're when, when I'm talking about this is I'm trying to focus more on minus one. Take away a player's worst category. Again, I'm talking in a, in a level of generality here as well, and it might not apply to your league. So you might have an 11-cat league or a 7-cat league or a 5-cat count, counting stat only league, whatever it is. But I just think that there is a utility in taking away a player's worst category. You could even say there's a utility in taking away a player's two worst categories. You could even say there's a utility in taking away a player's best category just to get an idea of if they're overall rank is getting skewed by one cat. There is, there's a whole bunch of, it's never as simple as straight number, this is it, no debates. There's a lot of nuance involved in it. And in saying all of that, it's taken me 18 minutes to get there, but I, I do think, that was a long time, I apologize. I, I do think it is important to understand why we need to pay attention to this. And theory, while it could be boring and dry and you just want to hear, well, what about this player? I get it, but you also have to understand why we're doing it or why we're discussing it. Who are the players who I project based on my projections to be better in points leagues? Now, I only used players who I think are going to be you know, top 100-ish sort of guys in either format rather than like I could look at the guy who's 300th and he's 90 spots better in points leagues versus um, category leagues, which you know is fine. But for the vast majority of people, that doesn't matter. Like, say, a Peyton Watson, who I think is, you know, based on my projections, is 76 spots better in points leagues versus category leagues. Or RJ Barrett, who's 72 spots better, but I still don't have him as a top 100 guy. Or you know, Marvin Bagley, who I think is 50 plus spots better in points leagues versus category leagues. But it doesn't really matter that much when we're talking about majority of leagues because these are not draftable or usable players. So, Paulo Banquero. For the guys who are top 100, top 110 is sort of the cutoff I used. Paulo Banquero, I have as 51 spots better in points leagues versus category leagues. Why? Well, high volume, subpar field goal percentage, 
high volume, subpar, free throw percentage. It's as simple as that. Yeah, he has low defensive stats as well, so his category league value doesn't get propped up by those numbers, but he's a big scorer, he rebounds, he gets good assists, which is the perfect recipe for being a very good category league, a very good points league player. Now, if he's able to increase his percentages to being even league average, well, his category league value jumps right back up. And then that narrows the gap. But at the moment, there's a pretty big difference in his value. I've got Jeremy Sohan as another one of these guys. In fact, that gives me a chance to do this. I haven't done it much. Sohan now! I don't know whether Sohan's going to start or if he's going to come off the bench. I would start him, but I don't know whether Pop will. I've got him 43 spots better. And you might think that's a little bit, a little bit weird for Sohan considering... Um, he's not a high volume scorer or anything like that, but he does struggle with shooting. He shot under 30% from three. That drags your field goal percentage down. He's not a great free throw guy, um, but he is able to get some rebounds and some assists and some points. Your old PRA. PRA is big for points leagues. And Sohan showed an ability to do that. Josh Giddy, I've got him 39 spots better in points leagues than category leagues. I, I really like him still in category leagues, but... He's got some really rough free throw percentage. And if he does, as I expect him to, get to the line more this season, then that does negatively impact his category value. Whereas for points leagues, it only helps because the more times you get to the line, the more free throws you hit, the more scoring you have, and that bumps that number up. Jalen Green, 38 spots better for me in points leagues versus category leagues. Again, his field goal percentage just stinks. and He's not an elite free throw guy necessarily. But if he jumps that from 42 to 46%, his category league rises and the gap narrows. Another one there is Russell Westbrook. Really easy. Shithouse field goals, terrible free throws, and you know even his uh, turnovers are dreadful. Price of the brick going up. He's also um, a, a guy that uh, the minutes are going to be a little bit iffy in terms of how much he plays, but he's really rough in those categories. He's also not a high-volume three guy, which, of course, for some reason, is overvalued in category leagues. And I say overvalued because... When those categories were decided upon 30 years ago, no one shot three. So someone who did was a real outlier. Now everyone does, and it's just points. It's just points. I, I, I really, it's one of those things I'm going to push against. It, field goal percentage shouldn't exist in a category in category leagues. It should be effective field goal percentage. And three-pointers made shouldn't be a category either, I don't think, because it's just scoring. Some other names who are better in points leagues. Julius Randle, obvious one. He sucks in field goals. He sucks in free throws. Big points, big rebounds, big assists. Not a steals or blocks guy. He's Paolo Bunkero. He's a points, rebounds, assist player. But he's probably a second round points league guy. 24 spots higher. I've got him in points versus categories. Pascal Siakam. I think you look at that and go, oh, Pascal Siakam. Um, 33 spots higher in a points league versus a category league. You know, why is that? Well, again, he can struggle at times with his efficiency numbers. He's not a big steals or blocks guy. And it's not always about... Yeah, well, if Paolo has, or not Paolo, Pascal has low steals and blocks, that doesn't mean that he is um, a, a bad category league player. It just means that other guys who have higher steals and blocks can push ahead of him and push him down the ranks because ranks are all relative, right? It's not about you have a certain value in a category league. It's all relative to everybody else around you. So while his overall value might sit in the 50s based on straight category league rankings, um, in a points league, it is just about volume of stats. Jaden Ivey, also, well, let's do Kyle. So Kyle Kuzma, the future MVP, 33 spots higher in a points league. Jaden Ivey, 31, and Andy Wiggins, 30 in a higher in a points league. All those guys, really obvious. Wiggins has really sucked with his free throw percentage. He doesn't really generate defensive numbers. Ivey's field goals are rough, and his free throws aren't sexy. And Kuzma has some bad percentage numbers. Now, Kuzma's going to get tons of volume in Washington, and he's not a high defensive stat guy. He's a low percentage player, but he's a points guy, and you'll get a lot of rebounds, and that, that works. In a, in a points league. Some other guys to take a look at who are better in points leagues. Ja Morant, the aforementioned Ja Morant. On a per game basis, he's about almost three rounds better in a points league than category league based on my projections. Darren Fox, that 56 is definitely not right. So I apologize for that number. That is, he's definitely not 56 spots better. He's like 28 spots better because his free throw percentage is not particularly strong. Same as Spencer Dinwiddie. He's about 25 spots higher, not 67 because his field goal percentage is really rough. His free throws also not always ideal. They can they can vary. I've got um, Sterling Henderson. Jesus God, Sterling. Who I think is going to be an interesting player, and I still don't know how that's going to work out with Lillard and all that scenario. But Scoot, I think as a rookie, is going to be significantly better as a points league guy because I think he'll get good volume of scoring. He'll get assists. 
But I think, as nearly all rookie point guards do, he'll have really bad field goal percentage, which will drop him down the category league rankings and make him seem a lot worse. And then Wendell Carter Jr., I've got him as 22 spots higher in a points league. He's like a low 70s free throw guy. He's okay in field goals. He's not a high-volume blocks player. He's solid enough, but he does actually translate higher in a points league than he does in a category league. What about the other side of things? What about the guys whose rankings are higher in categories than in points? Remember, I'm using this as a minus-one type ranking scenario, taking away a player's worst category. Um, Rob Williams, 54 spots better in category leagues versus points leagues. Really obvious. Rob Williams may not, well, I hope it's obvious. Rob Williams may not score 10 points per game. In fact, he probably doesn't. And in a points league, that's that's death. Like you can't really you can't really recover from that in a um in a points league. It's just you score eight points a game, you you just you're not doing it. Like you're just not getting there. Um But in a category league, shoot 70% from the field, block two plus shots get nine rebounds, maybe get 1.2 steals, you're home, right? That's really good value. Now, you've got to balance it, of course, because without the scoring, it's really hard to compete in that area. But his value there is much higher. Trey Murphy, 41 spots better in a category league. Why? So much of his value comes from being elite field goals, elite free throws, high three-pointers made in that category. He's not a high-volume guy. He's not going to be a high-volume guy, most likely, if Ingram and Zion play more than 60 games combined. What did they play last year? 80 games combined, I think they played last year. But he's better in categories because the valuation of both percentages and three-pointers, which don't count extra in a points league, makes him much higher there versus where he is in a um, in a points league. I got him 41 spots higher. And Yekra Kong with 34 spots higher in category leagues. Again, he's not going to be a big-minute player. He's going to get value, and it's going to look like he gets tons of value in a category league because high field goals, 60% field goals maybe, he might even be 80-plus from the free throw line, which is an unbelievable combination. He might block two shots a game, but he also might score 10 points, which is useless for points leagues. 34 spots higher. Draymond Green, well, he's not hitting double digits most likely. He might average 8-8-8 eight, eight, and eight with 1.4 steals and 1.4 blocks. It's really valuable in categories on the right team in the right scenario, but it's useless in points leagues. He's, he's almost, he's not quite, but he almost becomes undraftable in a points league. I've got him 34 spots higher. And then Ben Simmons. And this is an interesting one because in the past, when Ben Simmons was flying in Philadelphia, he was a better points league guy than he was a category league player because the negativity of his free throw percentage really dropped him down the overall ranks. But because of the way that I'm approaching category league rankings and really looking at it with the minus one lens on, I think that Simmons is actually a better category league guy than points league guy now. And the other reason is, is back in the Philly days, he'd averaged 17 real life points per game. He would do it on 20 usage. He'd get 17, 8, and 8, which is awesome. But now I don't really see that usage ever popping back up. So he might be 10, 8, and 8. And if you just discount the free throws because you're not focusing on that category, then his value in in, um, category leagues through those 8 assists, through those good rebounds, through his high steal numbers, and through good field goal percentage actually bumps him up. Whereas the biggest modifier of fantasy points is real life points. So if he goes from 17 to 10, that kills his points league value. If he goes back and becomes a 17 point per game scorer, well, his fantasy points league value probably does jump up and equal the equal the gap here. Again, that seems a little disinge- not disingenuous. Seems a little weird to say that Simmons is better in category leagues now, but based on my projections at the moment, he is. Some other guys who are better in category leagues: Dan Gafford, 30 spots higher. Well, his value is 70% shooting, roughly. Two blocks per game, roughly. The Wizards' backup center situation is in horribly dire. It is Mike Muscala or Anthony Gill or Boomer's legend Xavier Cooks. That's the backup center on this team. So if Gafford can stay out of foul trouble, he might have to play 36 minutes a night. Or they'll go small and play Kuzma, but he might get a shit ton of minutes. He might average 13 and 12 with 2.5 blocks and 70% shooting, which is okay for points leagues, but it's amazing for category leagues. D'Anthony Melton, 30 spots higher in a category league situation. Why? Well, he might average 10 points a game or 11 points a game. Now, that value could change depending on Harden's situation. But his value comes from being a guy who gets four assists and like two steals and a block. 
say, for, as a, a, or 0.8 blocks or 0.9 blocks, good numbers for a block. But his volume and his usage is low. And that doesn't translate as well. You look at this one for Fred Van Vliet and say, well, what, what? why is Fred Van Vliet better in a category league versus a points league? Well, again, I'm using minus one valuations here. So yes, the fact that he shoots 40% from the field is really bad. He's terrible at field goal percentage. He probably always will be. But if you're drafting Fred Van Vliet, you sort of know that. And he's not a particularly high usage player. He's not going to be a particularly high usage scorer. But what he does do is give you solid points. But the real value of Van Vliet comes from steal numbers. And he's actually a really good shot blocker as a guard. Steals, blocks, good free throws, good assists. And he's not getting by on 29 usage and 30 points per game. He's like a 21 usage player. That's another thing when we talk about the Raptors. People go, well, all Van Vliet's shots are gone. He's not a particularly high usage player. He's not low usage. He's not super, super high. But Van Vliet, in my projections, minus one, comes out two rounds better in categories versus points. Brook Lopez, that's an easy one. It's just shot blocks for him. Whether that sticks or not, I don't know. It can be quite volatile, especially at his age after a big jump up. But his points league value is nowhere near as high as what it is in category leagues. And the same goes for, of course, our mate Mitchell Robinson. And Mitch Robinson says, I'll take it from here. Just the stereotypical big man. Field goal percentage, rebounds, and blocks. He'll probably have 8% usage again or 9% usage. He might score 7 points a game. But he might get 11 rebounds. He might get 2 blocks. He might shoot 70% which all has value in category leagues, if applied appropriately. He's bad at free throws, but we're talking minus one. Jumps up 25 spots. In a points league, I don't even know that I'd bother drafting him. And the last list of guys I want to look at who are better in category leagues, well, it's a lot of the same stuff. The big fella, Walker Kessler. He might average 12 and 12 with 2.8 blocks. That's okay in a points league, but it's really good in a category league. I think he's at real risk of getting overdrafted in category leagues, but that's beside the point here. The Jedi... OG Ananobi. But what about Scarps? OG. Balenciaga stop ones. OG. Uh, you better stop OG. 22 spots higher in category leagues versus points leagues. He led the league in steals last season. Not a bad shot blocker. Maybe he gets a little bit more usage this season. In fact, I think he probably does. But it's not going to be enough to make him a points league stud versus his category league value. Nick Claxton. Well, what, what did I say for Mitchell Robinson? What did I say for Daniel Gafford? It's the same shit. He blocks shots. He gets good field goal percentage. That's what he does. That's a recipe for... Category league value versus points league value. Darius Garland is actually a little bit better in a category league than a points league because I think he can average a really high number of assists. His field goal percentage can be iffy at times. He's got great free throw percentage, but a really high number of assists. And because his usage can't spike as high with Mitchell there, that takes away... It's not a big difference. There's 21 spots difference, but he does look a better category league option to me. Again, minus one. And the last one, just throw it out there. Jared Allen, easy. Big man. Field goal percentage. Rebounds. Blocks, same thing, every time. These guys always look so much better in category league rankings versus points league rankings, always. And I don't really think that's going to change anytime soon. And that is the end of today's show. Don't forget, get your entry in for the FBI LOFB World Cup. I hope that made a lot of sense in terms of just looking at it and examples of players. We had 30 different players who were the higher or lower in different formats the understanding of why the rankings are presented how they are and how you can get tricked or fooled or misinterpret what gets put out through sites and ADP data and articles and podcasts and Twitter threads and whatever. Be understanding of what you're absorbing, including what you absorb from me, including what I say. Understand that it is all context dependent and based on what I try to provide for the majority of people. I try and do my best to cover things off in terms of what categories versus points. But this sort of idea, just giving you a baseline that when, if I say someone is this level of player and you go, well, what about in points leagues? You can do a brief calculation in your head and go, well, he's actually a, a low scorer whose value comes from high percentages and defensive stats, probably knock 30 spots off him in a points league if I'm referencing values that way. And yet the opposite for categories versus points. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app and on YouTube. Thumb it up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.